And here we go. Ethan and Rich looking for that first weapon to spawn. Ethan starting off with the Mirage pick, not actually opting for the Mordex this time. Maybe he's not feeling the gauntlet matchup with the Katars that Wrench usually brings to the table. Wants that spacing to try to get it away. And that was a very unusual weapon throw. Yeah, uh, that was kind of an up toss from Ethan. Might have been trying to read an aerial approach from Wrenched. Good dodges from Ethan, recognizing these neutral signature attempts from Wrench. He's been able to avoid it, but he's still taking quite a bit of damage here. Now he's going to be going over to his comfort weapon, that scythe, that kind of carry over from the Mordix that we see him play alongside his teammate, uh, Sandstorm. But he needs to get some big strings. He does get that recovery off the neutral light. Some decent damage here. Meanwhile, Wrench trying to regain control off stage. The ground pound comes Ooh. out. Second one connects. Wrench did reset his jumps with the Number wall touch. Number three. Third one from Ethan. Wrench. Four. Fourth one from Ethan. Ethan takes the first stock with the scythe ground pound. How to count with Ethan ground pounds. <laughs> I know. What? Now coming to you Two. on Sesame Street three? near you. <laughs> Ethan with the ground pounds does take the first stock. Wrench did get some decent Ooh. damage onto Ethan. I like the weapon toss mix ups coming out from Ethan. Nairs and Sayers can't quite continue it, but the recovery follow oh. another one. He Bad just keeps spot. going. We saw this before. Wrench gets around, gets back up onto the stage. The never ending pressure from Ethan. That was insane. It was just attack after attack. Wrench trying to get a little bit of retaliation in here. He's already got Ethan. In the nice red, air. but Ethan is so clutch on these moves right now, and he just finally gets taken out of that stock. I like what he did there. Even though it led to his death, he went for the option coverage play. He had the up toss with the scythe into a pickup side sig, covered so many different positions. Wrench just with really good movement around it. Ethan, though, has the recovery, almost gets the stock off of Wrench. He has the spear. It's not going to be as effective if he goes for that Ooh. ground pound play onto Wrench. So instead, he tries to stay on the main stage, waits for Wrench to come back up safely. Lots of down sig attempts. I feel like every single one of these signature moves that Ethan is throwing out that don't That's connect. That's death. I think that every single one of those that don't connect, he he's throwing them out at the like in the right moments, but at the wrong time. Like if he just charged it up, maybe like a quarter of a second, he would connect those. Okay. Meanwhile, Wrenched and Ethan are even in stocks. Wrenched had a big play with the offstage with the Qatar Sairs. But Ethan immediately was able to even it up. Now, it's just a battle of these string weapons. Who can get the dodge read? Who can get the bigger string? That's what it's going to come down to. Ethan goes in, gets that downer, oh, gets the downlight follow-up. There's the dodge burn from Wrench. Dodge burned from Ethan. Just back and forth. But Ethan got a little bit of the advantage. Throws out the down sick. Wrench with the active frames wins out. Wrench now getting a lot of big damage here from the guitars of recovery. Really punishing once you catch it out of the right position. Ethan going for his own recovery, trying to get wrenched off on that edge guard positioning. The wrench turning it around, rec recovery from himself right here to push Ethan off into the right. Now Ethan recovering back into the middle, but the weapon star coming in and nice combo off the weapon toss. Ethan underneath with the uppercut sends wrenched flying up. Wrench goes for the weapon toss. Ethan goes high. Wrenched. Avoids that side air. Both of them are so close to kill percent. Both of them want Ooh. that advantage. The gravity cancel down sig almost works in Ethan's favor. Just not enough mustard on it to finish off wrenched stock. Wrenched underneath with the uppercut. The unarmed recovery game between the two of them. Ethan is disarmed. He throws up the side heavy. That's the kill. Wrenched Ooh. takes game one. Great comeback from Wrench to bring that back. Ethan had such a strong lead in the beginning, had almost a full stock, had it wrenched in the red, but Wrench was able to bring it back all the way through to an even threshold and then reverse it completely. Fantastic play on his part. Moving into game number two. That's got to imagine. Two damage? Yeah. I just two thought. damage. That is a two damage difference between the two of them. That really could have swung either direction. But Wrenched was the one to get that finishing blow. Ethan threw out that side heavy, and that's kind of the pitfall of heavy attack. Sure, there's a lot of force behind it, but they've got equally high amount of recovery, or at least a proportionately amount of recovery, and that was why Wrenched was able to get a big punish on Ethan mm -hmm. that led to the kill. We're going right on into game two. Ethan's likely going to be looking for a map that he can use a lot of scythe stuff on. I, I, I appreciate that Wrench didn't go to Twilight. It tends to work out in scythe players' favor.
Well, either way, it's going to be a Three, difficult two, map for either one, one of these roll. players to deal with off stage. So whoever can control their opponent, push them off stage more often. That's going to be if there was a time stat that we could Ooh. keep track oh. of of how oh. often someone was stuck off stage. Whoever had the stage control more often on this map would be the one that I would think wins in the end. I like the spear play that just came out from Ethan. We saw a lot of scythe stuff come out in game one, and it was kind of looking like Ethan was just going to be a scythe player, and he just liked Mirage's signatures. But instead, we see in game two the Ooh. adaptation from Ethan. The ground pounds. Ooh. Another one. Oh, wait, that was and it. Wrenched is done for Ethan. He doesn't need the scythe for the ground pounds. He's got unarmed <laughs> ground pounds as well. Ethan takes the first stock in commanding fashion. More consistent force directions on that, too, because it launches straight down every time rather than getting it on a certain angle, launching to a one side or the other. Maybe you get, if you get it at the right angle, the sweet spot, you launch them straight down. But that always, unarmed ground pound, always straight down. It's always guaranteed. Ethan really giving a lot of breathing room to Wrench, making Wrench make these approaches. Ooh. Gets underneath Wrench, Neutralite goes for that recovery, expecting the dodge out from Wrench, but Wrench is underneath, hits the down stick. Ethan, he's got movement, gets around it, gets back up safely, goes for the down light, but he was off stage, so it ends up coming out as a down aerial attack. Wrench needs to find this stock finisher onto Ethan, the neutral air, not enough force behind it. He's going to be looking for a recovery, like a down light to set it up. Doesn't get the force on that recovery, he dropped it. Good spot dodge from Ethan to avoid the damage there. Now coming in from offstage, tries to recover, gets caught by a wrench, and there's the taunt. A little bit early for that high five. Maybe it's just kind of a, hey, we're not done yet. I'm going to high five my sidekick just a second. Well, he did high five as well at the end of the last game. Absolutely true. Ethan doesn't really need to high five just yet. Does get the down sig on to wrenched. Does some good damage on to wrenched. He's got that health advantage. Ground pound there comes out. Ground pounds from Ethan are just so effective. The weapon toss, he's still got the unarmed opportunity if he needs it, but Wrench doesn't have the movement to get up. Ethan, massive lead, doesn't want the scythe completely threw it away. He wants the spear here. Weapon toss comes out. Ethan over to the scythe, just trying to keep Wrench from picking up a weapon. There's the weapon spawn. Wrench able to pick it up safely down light side air. Neutral Ooh. sig. Ethan's in trouble. Oh, Ethan's and a weapon dead. snipe. Huge play from Wrench, and that is going to even up the stocks directly one to one damage is pretty close as well wrench now making a show of this weapon star not able to get to that weapon spawn in time though he then is going to find that spear and he's still trying to make the spear work but wrench is doing a much better job at getting it damage to connect ethan uh took quite a bit there from wrench this is uh wrench is coming back into this the neutralites come out it is back and forth between the two of them Neutral sig again from wrenched. Ethan side sigging over the weapon toss. He's got the weapon control. He's got the scythe. Can he push this slight advantage, advantage over wrenched? Wrench picks up Katars. Again, Ethan's looking for the setup into the neutral sig, and that one oh, is it. Oh, Ethan's got it taunts of his own. Wins. You got red sun. Page 46. You're going to dodge to the right neutral sig for the kill. I'm sure that's what it's, I don't have that book, so I Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't that, know, that's don't. Ethan's. He pulled it off the library. <laughs> We're going into game three. Ethan and wrenched so back and forth between the two of them. And I, I gotta believe Wrench might, maybe he'll hold back a little bit on those taunts because it uh, did not work so well for him in game two. I can't blame him for the game one one. That was a, he closed out the game, mm -hmm. so he's gonna taunt, high five himself a little bit. Game two was a little bit premature, but hey, Ethan's got taunts of his own. Maybe mm -hmm. there, maybe this is one of those things where like when you're playing with your friend, you just kind of taunt at each other mm -hmm. and you're like, yo, what's up? I beat you, I got your stock, ha ha. Pat, beat yeah. the chest. Yeah. Just got to showboat a little bit. You know, uh, maybe we'll see a character swap here from Wrenched. I don't really think so, but... I think he's going to the library right now trying to pick a book up on Ethan right now. Just trying to see oh, if... Oh, got to get the quick yeah, check he's, out. He's got he's to check it out. Make sure he uh, he's brought his library card because he needs to read Ethan here. It's, I mean, it, it is a battle of reads with these weapons. Mm -hmm. it, it, with Wrenched being so heavily... Uh, Qatar focused and with Ethan so heavily scythe focused they're both looking for that that one read that'll lead to so much extra to just give him that slight momentum boost over the other player 
what map is going to be the pick. Wrenched leaving Shipwreck on the board. Uh, it's going to be Shipwreck. Confident. Yeah, it, it's, it's oh. not going to be Shipwreck. It's going to be Small Enigma. I was going to say, uh, the way Ethan was able to close out the, the Shipwreck map, I, I would have expected it, but maybe he's like, you know what? I'm pretty sure Wrenched has a new game plan for Shipwreck. So we're just going to completely throw that one away. We're going to go into game three on Small Enigma. There's all these platforms. It'll stop a lot of Wrenched's guitar approaches, and it'll work out in Ethan's favor, especially if he plays this low platform game. Ethan already getting started with the guitar play. Wrench trying to get a little bit of damage with the sword, nice. but already Ethan getting forcing that Grab edge up. guard play and the ground pound. Not going to connect though, but Ethan just keeps the damage going. Doesn't matter how armed or unarmed, he is getting that damage to connect, and he is doing a fantastic job of doing it. Wrench right now looking for the little bit of retaliation. He's already in the red. It's going to be a dangerous position to be in against Ethan right now as he tries to utilize these platforms into his advantage, and there's. The gravity cancel down sig. Now trying to look for a recovery possibly. No, not quite. The neutral sig coming out, not going to connect. Recovery comes out from Ethan. A lot of damage has been done from Ethan. He's going to be looking for that kill option. The recovery or a signature of his choice. Meanwhile, Wrench just trying to play this as safe as possible. Build up any taps of damage that he can. Just close up this gap as much as possible. And he's doing a great job of it. Build up enough damage that he could start looking for the kill option onto Ethan. Ethan needs to find this finisher. He gets caught. Damage trading back and forth. But now it is uh, good for Wrench as he, he's closing this gap. The ground pound misses. Looking for the spike. Ethan on the edge. Wrench trying to make his way back. And this is going to be dangerous for both of these players. Whoever gets the advantage here has that potential for a stock extension. Looks like Wrench trying to get the finisher. Side air. Recovery. There it is. Side air off the map. And the taunt caught true combo to get a little bit of... Uh, I guess salt in the it's a wound. It's a morality boost. Ethan, not oh. going to be concerned with it. Hits that recovery. Going to be sticking with the scythe this time. This is uh, game three. Both of them are fighting for that winner's final spot. That guaranteed top three. The loser of this goes down into the lower bracket and just has to play so many more games. We saw Blue do it in the in the EU side of things, but I don't think any NA player wants to do that. In general, as a player, you don't want to have to do that if you can avoid it. Ethan getting that pivot neutral air, that alternate hit. Ethan's really looking for one of these scythe strings to start, but Grab up. he's having so much trouble finding uh -oh. one of the follow-ups on a wrench. Uh -oh. And uh -oh. another hit, uh -oh. another side air, weapon throw not going to connect, ground pound, uh -oh. no down air, finds the catch. In the tap from Ethan, barely makes his way back on stage. Wrench now finding his way back as well, picking up the the sword to try to pressure Ethan just a little bit. But Ethan blocked out from that weapon. That is going to be Wrench denying that spawn. It just gets more and more dangerous from here for Ethan. Nice. And there it is. Yeah, Wrench able to close out that side. And this game started with a huge advantage to Ethan. He had so much damage built up under Wrench's first stock and Wrench just able to completely shut that down, stop any momentum that Ethan had, and Ethan was able to even it up just Ooh. barely. This time he does get the kill, but he is he's just on the back foot. He's definitely more damaged than Wrenched, and Wrenched is going to be looking for that weapon spawn. Ethan's going to try to cover it, but he doesn't get the read. Wrench just staying low. Ethan went for that recovery to catch him. Ethan now looking for something to catch Wrenched out with, and he gets that starter, but he never finds the follow-up. Light from Ethan. Good dodge punish. He's looking for the Nairs and Sairs. Another neutral light coming out from Ethan. He's getting just these taps of damage. Slowly coming back into this. Nice recovery. Catches. Wrench goes for the neutral sig. This time, Wrench able to avoid it. Has enough iframes. Wrench not quite in the kill spot where that neutral sig will connect. Ethan very patient, just kind of dancing around the main stage. Throws out a lot of signatures there, and Wrench is getting some punishes. This can go either direction. Wrench swapping over to the sword. Has a little bit more punish Ooh. range with a side sig connects. And Ethan, he's like, hey, I, I got that same book, remember? <laughs> I still have that. I didn't return it to the library just yet.